Okay, I'm at the airport and I don't have paper here, but let us understand the basic difference between Corda Equina and Conus Medullaris on a tissue paper. So, Conus Medullaris is the terminal part of the spinal cord. It starts at the level of L1 vertebra and it mainly contains the sacral and coccygeal segments of the spinal cord. Versus Corda Equina, which is essentially a horse's tail, refers to all those nerves that have to descend before exiting the spinal canal. See, the causes for any dysfunction are almost the same, which is just trauma, tumors, spinal canal stenosis, etc, etc. As Dirty Medicine would quote it, conus refers to a transverse myelitis sort of situation and corda refers to a radiculopathy kind of situation. The spinal cord and the spinal nerves are involved here, so both UMN and LMN signs can be seen. Whereas here, you will only see LMN because only the roots are involved. And since the cord is involved as a whole, most times the lesions are symmetric, whereas here you might have a lesion here, you might have one here, etc, etc. So it's usually asymmetric. See, the lesion here is central, it's more diffuse, so the motor weakness is slightly lesser. But here, since the whole nerve is involved, it's more focal and the weakness that you see in your limbs is quite higher as compared to this. Now coming to sensory deficits. This only innervates the sacrococcygeal region which is the perianal or perineal region. So it's called saddle anesthesia. Saddle matlab when you sit on a horse that entire saddle area whatever is in contact with it that is called saddle anesthesia if you can visualize it. Here the sensory deficit is more dermatomal because let's say L1 is involved then the L1 dermatome sensations are gone. It can be unilateral as well. Bladder dysfunction here is early and severe the reason being that your entire parasympathetic bladder and bowel nuclei are present here that is S2, S3, S4 and here it's a little bit of a later manifestation because the peripheral parasympathetic nerves are involved and that might not exactly result in immediate bladder dysfunction. Coming to reflexes knee jerk is preserved here because knee jerk is L3, L4 and L3, L4 are not affected here. Ankle jerk might be gone. Bulbo cavernous may be present in certain cases. Sometimes if the transaction is below the reflex arc, the bulbo cavernous reflex may be present, but it's, it's usually not present. Your knee, ankle, bulbo cavernous, all of them may go depending on which of the peripheral nerves are involved. This was a fairly simple explanation of both of these. These are obviously much more complex topics, but I'm not getting into that as long as you understood.